hello everyone. Welcome to Central Park. My name is Ian. I see we have visitors from all over the world today. And uh, I'd like to share some exciting news that it is snowing in Central Park right now. So um, I'm excited to welcome the winter. And I see messages from all over the Northeastern United States in particular, particular. And it looks like a lot of us are enjoying some snow right now. So um, it's very exciting as we change seasons. And I'd like to thank you all for joining me. Uh, I do work for the Central Park Conservancy and we are the nonprofit that manages Central Park. So we keep it clean and green year round. And we know that uh, given the ongoing crisis, uh, it's very difficult for many people or impossible to get to Central Park right now. So we hope that we can bring the park to you through um, our programming, like this weekly walk in which we will uh, stroll through Central Park. Um, and all of the photographs you'll see on today's walk were taken by myself just a few days ago. Um, so we'll get a, a live look at what the park looks like right now, although uh, I'm not able to capture the snowstorm that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, and I'd like to share our mission, um, which is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from urban life, enhancing the enjoyment and well being of all. So I hope this short walk does give you some enjoyment of the park, whether you're able to make it here in person or not. And we'll be together for about 15 more minutes. And in addition to the photos that I mentioned that I took, I have also sourced some historical images from the Museum of the City of New York, as well as the New York Public Library Digital Archives. And moving on, I'd like to share that um, you can take advantage of some of Zoom's features to interact with everyone, almost 300 of us today uh, on this weekly walk. You can use the chat feature and you'll see on the image on your screen where the chat feature box is, um, there's a tab that says all panelists. If you see that when you open up your chat, you can toggle that button depending on who you'd like to address. So you can address just my colleagues on the back end, or you can address all 291 visitors that we have with us today. And please look out in that chat box because my colleagues, Alan and Ryan, will share some links for you to utilize in case you're interested in upcoming programming which includes uh, a virtual tour, which is a 45 minute tour. So if you're interested in longer form program, you can check that out next Tuesday, December 15th at 3 p.m. We have another weekly walk next week with yours truly. And then next Thursday, December 17th at 3 p.m. We have a Trees of Central Park program. So check those out. And you can also view our past programming on our YouTube channel, which my colleagues will link you to. You can also use the Q&A feature if you have a specific question and you will also see some polls pop up on your screen. Um, I'm activating one now that you should see. Uh, I'm just asking if you have viewed any of our other virtual programming and you'll see an array of options. This is just helpful for us to get an idea of um, what we are getting out to you all. So thank you for helping us with that. And I will share the results in a moment. But Let's get to Central Park because that's what you all came for. Um, we can see a view of the entire park on the left here. I've brought up a blue rectangle that uh, surrounds the area that we'll be visiting today. And I've named this walk Central Park North, which technically refers to the section of 110th Street that abuts the northern section of the park. But I've used the term a bit liberally today we will be starting on the street, but we will meander through the very northernmost section of the park. So we'll be inside the park and we'll getting a good view of a street with some very spectacular architecture as well. And you can see that section of the park I'm referring to in a bit more detail here. On the next slide, I've mapped out our route today. We'll be starting at Frederick Douglass Circle, which is the very northwestern corner of Central Park. And we'll be walking east towards the Dana Center on the Harlem Mirror. Now, it's worth noting that um, when Central Park was originally created, a, a large plot of land um, close to 800 acres was purchased. And this began in 1853 and was completed several years later um, used by the use of eminent domain. However, uh, this 
plot of land extended from 59th Street to 106th Street. It was only several years later that the area between 106th Street and 110th Street was added and that includes 65 acres of land. So it's quite substantial. And uh, I'm glad that we have this in the park today because um, it, this area is very rugged and uh, I think it has a distinct character. And that is actually one of the reasons why it was added to the park because developing in this area would have been quite expensive. Um, and uh, why Central Park North? Why did I choose this walk? Well, I think that um, as we go into the winter, this the rugged terrain in this area, I think really complements um, what I would like to get across today and that um, despite it getting colder outside, uh, there's still plenty to do outside and um, outdoors to enjoy. So we'll, we'll move into the park. Let me just share the results of the poll that I um, activated before. You can see that um, a large portion of just on these weekly walks, which is great. And I see some of you have checked out our other um, programming as well. So if you haven't, um, we've done a lot at this point, um, several months in uh, to our, our big push for virtual programming. So you can check out quite a bit if there's a landscape you'd like to learn more about. If you do see that pop up on your screen, you can exit out and get rid of it as well. All right, so here we are in Frederick Douglass Circle, which is a memorial name for the great abolitionist. Uh, once again, at the very northwestern corner of Central Park, and this circle is considered part of Central Park. However, um, while this was dedicated in uh, 1950, there was no memorial here or a physical um, statue um, until very recently. In 2010, this was open to the public and it was officially dedicated in 2011. And I think this is one of the best sculptures in the park and it was, the entire memorial was designed by the Harlem-based artist Algernon Miller, as well as the Hungarian-born sculptor, sculptor Gabriel Koren. And there's not just a statue here, there's also a, an interesting pattern of the um, pavement here, which um, references an African quilt motif. And there's also behind the statue, you might see on the right, a bronze depiction of the Big Dipper, which people who were uh, escaping from slavery um, used that constellation to guide themselves north. So um, I, I think a good place to start if you'd like to do a walk through the northern section of the park. And past that memorial, we see this entrance to the park, which takes you over a bridge to the drive inside the park. You could go over that, but as we walk through the park, we're gonna go down this set of stairs and set instead. We're gonna go down these steep stairs because it affords us a nice view of the bridge. Um, and you can see it here. It's simply called the 110th Street Bridge. There is one book on arches and bridges in Central Park um, that attributes the name Mount Cliff Arch to this bridge. However, that was an invention by the author. It's only known officially as the 110th Street Bridge. But um, despite its humble name, it's um, quite big um, in scale. And the arch itself is 16 feet high and 21 feet wide. And like all the arches and bridges in the park, when you go through it, it transports you to a new landscape. And from here, we get a great view of 110th Street proper. You can see the buildings that line the northern section of the park. And for our visitors who aren't from New York or not familiar with New York, there are several of the most famous neighborhoods in New York surround Central Park. And on the northern section of the park where we are now, the neighborhood of Harlem um, abuts the park. And um, this is a neighborhood that was developed in the 19th century, um, but really exploded in population in the early 20th century and has been home to many different groups of people, but notably it's one of the most famous historically black neighborhoods in the United States. And as such, um, several leaders um, of civil rights, well, we had Frederick Douglass, who is an abolitionist, as well as 20th century leaders um, of the civil rights movement, such as the first black congressman from New York, um, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Um, and on 
7th Avenue next to the park, that boulevard is named for him. And then on 6th Avenue as well, um, the boulevard is named for Malcolm X. So um, as such, I think this area has a very, um, is very significant historically. So it's another um, point of interest as you visit this area. And I also wanna make the case that um, once again, you can visit the park in the winter. And I think as um, we have, you know, we our only options mostly is to um, socialize outside if we're able to or get to the park. And um, yes, the trees don't have leaves on them, but without the leaves, you can actually get a um, great look at the sinuous shapes that some of them have. And I really enjoy doing that as I'm walking through the park. There's a playground here as well, the 110th Street Playground, which I think has one of the best backdrops because of the steep rock face behind it and the great trees around it. Um, so there's a lot to see already as we're in this, this small corner that you might ignore because it's not in one specific landscape proper. Um, and just to orient you, we're here now and we're going to uh, venture onto the drive because there's a very interesting view I'd like to share. And as we walk up here, we'll be surrounded by walkers and joggers and bikers who use this road. But I think the, the main thing you'll notice are these rock faces that hang over the drive. And they're huge. And because they stand out so much, they've been a point of interest for a long time. And I was able to find a historical image from over 100 years ago in 1905 that um, shows this very same view. And as we get closer, you can see the scale of this rock thanks to the people walking by. Um, and we'll take a closer look at uh, the rock because um, you'll see that there is plenty of color in the park all year round. You just have to look a little bit closer in the winter and you'll see this moss and lichen that I think create this beautiful palette this earthy, wintry palette that we can enjoy. And we're rewarded for our curiosity and stopping and smelling the roses because we'll see this blue jay here. Uh, if you don't see it, I'll outline it in a red square, but it's one of the most visible birds because of its plumage and because of the loud squawking it does. It's hard to miss and they are in Central Park year round. So if you do get a chance to visit, chances are you will see a blue jay like this. So it's not really a rare discovery, but it was nice to see anyway. All right, well, we'll go to the um, beginning of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard here. And I saw a banner from one of my colleagues, Joseph, that reads, the park provides a place to remember the good, feel the sun and embrace hope. And like all the uh, messages I've seen around the park, this is inspiring to me because um, I think when we're walking through the park, I do feel gratitude above all else. And um, even though it's uh, pretty cold while we're walking around here, uh, I am, um, I have experienced my breath being taken away by the views we get to see and the um, views such as this, like this ginkgo tree um, that's lost most of its leaves at this point. But if you do take a moment to appreciate what you have rather than, um, I guess, being disappointed that it's cold out, you can see some really interesting patterns in this tree with the alternating leaf buds um, on the branches or taking a look at this majestic oak tree with its large crown. So that's one fun thing you can do in the winter. And you can also see views that would normally be obscured in the warm month by leaves. And from 110th Street, you can actually see this historic fort, the Blockhouse. We explored this fort um, a couple of weeks ago with Ryan. So in case you're wondering where that was, it's very close to the, the uh, very northernmost section of the park. And I wanted to uh, take a look at this view on 110th Street too, which is going to be very unspectacular to everyone who lives in New York. But for our visitors from abroad or other parts of the country, this is one way that you could get to Central Park. This is City Bike. This is the bike sharing program in New York. Um, and it's one of the ways I enjoy getting around the city. But I wanted to ask you all, in case you do visit Central Park, 
or if you've visited Central Park before, um, what is your preferred way to get to the park? And if you aren't able to access Central Park right now, um, then you could check, you'd have to fly and hopefully you'll be able to one day um, visit again if you're not able to get to the park right now. Um, and if I'll share the results momentarily, but you can X that out once again if it's on your screen. And for our next stop, we'll get to see this sewage drain. I know it's a very exciting stop and you might be thinking, why are we looking at this drain? This isn't a particularly nice view. Well, uh, there's a great deal of history, right? Or a small deal of history here at least. Um, because I was looking at old maps, trying to get some inspiration for this, for this section of the park. And I was able to find this map from 1875. We'll see a couple changes, um, like the gate was once called Stranger's Gate, that's now further south from the park for some reason. And the block house is noted on this map. What you might notice um, for astute observers, uh, that this body of water is no longer here. This is why we're, we stopped here, because where this little pond was um, is now that drain and the low-lying land that's just covered with plants. This was known as a lily pond. And uh, as late as the early 20th century, I'm not sure exactly when, there's photographic evidence of the pond. And you can see it here. This is from the New York Public Library. And uh, it's one of the relics of the past, which is now gone in the park. I'm not sure exactly why uh, it is gone or what happened to it. Um, but at some point, the source of the water must have been cut off or it dried up but um, it's something that's no longer here. And you can see the block house in the back if you look closely. So um, there are some hidden waters in the park. All right, so we've just covered this little corner of the park, which you might never have been to or known there was interesting things to find, but we have found some. And we'll continue towards the Harlem Mirror towards the end of our walk um, down this winding path and we will get to the mirror, which we have visited before on weekly walks, but I wanted to share because it changes every season. And um, we'll see one of the last remnants of fall, this weeping willow tree with this beautiful yellow golden color to it. Whereas most of the trees in the park are barren right now. I'll end the polling now and it seems like most people walk, which is great. So we have a lot of visitors, I'll take it, who live close to the park. So um, thank you for exploring your neighborhood with me. And for everyone else um, who might live around New York or live in other places, um, you'll have to use other means. So thank you for sharing that. And um, we'll get some more views of the mirror here. This is an interesting view here. If you take a close look, you'll see the mirror on the right and an Austrian pine tree on the left. Doing some more digging, I was able to find a historical image of a similar view from 1937, and you can see a pine tree on the left. And now, the first thing that popped in my mind, is this the same tree? Probably not, because uh, pine trees in general tend not to live that long, like um, close to 100 years, unlikely. Um, but it's interesting to think about the meticulous landscaping done in the park, because if this isn't the same tree, then somebody had the thought to um, preserve the landscape and plant a similar tree in the exact same spot. And another point of interest, you might see people boating on the mirror, which is something you were able to do once upon a time, um, which is now gone. Um, coming back to the present day, you'll see another sign of winter. Um, you'll see these red ladders going up all over the park. And we hope, you know, these never have to be used, but sometimes, these uh, water bodies will ice over and you should never go on them. Obviously it's very dangerous, um, but you'll see these pop up all around um, the park in the winter. And hopefully they're a deterrent um, for any risky behavior. There's um, a lot of uh, bird life around the mirror all year long. So it's another thing you can come see in the winter, like these mallards. It's a little dark in this photo, but the bird closest to us is a male mallard. And at the end of the summer, the males with the, noted, uh, the um, recognizable green crown uh, molt, and they're just starting to get their shiny green head back. So you'll notice those around as, several, uh, um, as well as several other 
bird species. And we are um, nearing the end of our walk now, we're at the Dana Center, but I wanted to um, uh, celebrate uh, winter and the holidays um, with one great view here. Next week we'll be at the other end of the park in the south, southern end and see the world's largest menorah. And today we'll see the holiday tree lighting um, that was done on the park just this past week. Um, this is a tradition we've done for 24 years now. So you'll see this flotilla um, with a tree on it with um, lights. And this was the process of creating it. And you'll see one of my colleagues from the rustic architecture team um, constructing this flotilla um, with the final result here, which doesn't look so impressive, but uh, well, it does look impressive, but not at, at, at its peak. And if you come here when it's dark out, you'll see it all lit up like this which is um, to me a very cheerful view um, because it's ephemeral and um, something that you'll only be able to see for a couple of weeks, but really gets me um, excited for the winter. So um, this will be the end of our walk here. What I hope to achieve um, in addition to sharing some new information with you is an appreciation for the park during all seasons. And we'll have several more um, winter walks uh, or winter themes in our weekly walks coming up. So I hope you're looking forward to those. Thank you again for joining us. Apologies if I went a little over on time, um, but uh, I wanted to um, once again, plug our other upcoming programming. So if you do want longer programs, you can attend one of our tours um, next Tuesday. Once again, we have a, a Southern welcome tour at 3 p.m. Next Wednesday, we have another weekly walk with myself. And next Thursday, we have a Trees of Central Park program. That's at 3 p.m. next Thursday. My colleagues will share all those links again. And um, uh, I said thank you already, but thank you again. Um, and please check out uh, our website if you'd like to stay connected in other ways and keep up to date with the happenings in the park. And you can download some um, resources such as coloring pages and word scrambles and Zoom backgrounds like the one I'm using now. We also have a downloadable wallpaper of the holiday um, tree lighting, uh, the, the lit up trees that I just showed that you can download as well. So you can check that out. Um, you can also shop uh, online at our website uh, my colleagues will share the link in case you're interested in getting a holiday gift and you can support the park simultaneously. So that would be great if you'd like to check that out as well. There's some, some really nice merch in there. Um, so we'll be back again the same time next week and from the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe and be well. Thank you. <laughs>